archfieldweather.com meteorologist Paul Dorian here on Monday morning, August the 5th. Hurricane Debbie has just come ashore in the Big Bend region of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane. It did indeed undergo some uh, rapid intensification over the last 24 to 36 hours or so. First uh, became a tropical depression, then intensified into tropical storm status, and then uh, late last night, uh, evolved into Category 1 hurricane and again just made landfall early this morning on Monday morning. It will encounter a developing upper level ridge across the eastern states over the next few days and that will slow down its northern uh, progression quite dramatically and it will continue to produce some heavy rainfall over the southeastern states over the next few days. Some tropical moisture is actually going to make it all the way up into the mid-Atlantic region as early as late tomorrow or tomorrow night, contributing along with a cold frontal system to the possibility of some heavy rainfall. Again, that's as early as late tomorrow or tomorrow night, all the way as far north as the mid-Atlantic region. Let's start off by looking at the latest visible satellite imagery loop and uh, you have to wait until the sun comes up to be able to see these visible satellite images here. It, again, it made landfall right in this region right here, and there is no eye. At least I cannot detect an, an eye, but it does have your classic kind of a, a, an S-shaped uh, hurricane look to it with some inflow coming in here and feeding in and wrapping around that center, which again, just made landfall in the Big Bend region of Florida as a Category 1 hurricane. Uh, it, it, the, uh, the center of this system can be more easily detected with the uh, radar uh, echoes here. And we'll take a look at that right now on this particular set of uh, images. And here we go. You can see kind of the center right here. Again, it made landfall just a short time ago. We're just past 8 a.m. now, Eastern Time, on Monday morning. And this will be a slow mover over the next few days. So this entire area down here will get some uh, tremendous rainfall over the next few days. Again, this is the latest radar loop. Made landfall just a short time ago as a Category 1 hurricane. Will now undergo some weakening as it uh, pushes over land, but there is a good chance it will re-intensify, uh, and we'll talk about that over the next few minutes. Well, here's the latest official forecast track by the National Hurricane Center. Again, this system started off in this area out here as a tropical depression, then intensified tropical storm status right about in this area here. That's Tampa Bay right here, and then reached Category 1 hurricane status right in this region right here. It has made landfall over uh, the Big Bend region of Florida. Now, it will be encountering an intensifying upper-level ridge over the next couple of days, and that will slow down its northern progression here and it looks like it'll uh, cut across Georgia and then probably emerge again out over the open waters of the southwestern Atlantic and I, I think right here the National Hurricane Center has it remaining as tropical storm in this particular position but I would not be surprised at all if this re-intensifies probably in the Wednesday time frame back into hurricane status maybe Cat 1 hurricane status even an outside chance of Cat 2 right in this area. And then it makes a second landfall, probably over South Carolina. Now, later in the week, it'll finally move to the north into the Mid-Atlantic region. But again, the tropical moisture associated with Debbie will actually contribute to uh, some potential heavy rainfall as early as late tomorrow, tomorrow night, in the Mid-Atlantic region. That's as it combines with an incoming cold frontal system. So even though it's the remnants of Debbie may not move into the mid-Atlantic region until the end of the week. It will begin affecting the weather, D.C., Philadelphia, New York City, as early as late tomorrow. Well, I want to walk through the Canadian model run. I think it has uh, probably a better handle on this overall situation. Nothing is set in stone. Whenever you have a tropical system that slows down dramatically, uh, computer forecast models have difficulty and it's really a no guarantee as to where this storm system <coughs> excuse me ultimately goes and how quickly or how slowly it moves into a, a new area <coughs> excuse me this is the this is the five-day uh, forecast of total accumulated uh, precipitation 
uh, by the end of this five-day period this uh, takes us into the upcoming weekend and again this is using the Canadian model run from last night and I tend to agree with this scenario right here that will be some very heavy rainfall up and down the Atlantic seaboard over the next several days in the immediate next two two or three days or so focus on this region but again some tropical moisture feeds all the way up into the mid-atlantic region by late tomorrow tomorrow night there'll be an incoming cold frontal system and somewhere in the mid-atlantic region there could be some torrential rainfall late tomorrow tomorrow night not exactly sure if it sets up just north of the pennsylvania maryland border across maybe southern pennsylvania or central pennsylvania something we'll have to focus in on uh, later tomorrow into tomorrow night but again tropical moisture can add and, and certainly enhance the chance of some heavy rainfall up to the north even before the center of the remnants of De debbie or moves into the mid-atlantic region but again this is uh, two plus inches easily across the entire atlantic seaboard over the next five days or so uh, there have been many areas that have had uh, drought conditions or dry conditions over the last several weeks but we've had um, quite a bit of rainfall really in uh, as, uh, in the mid-atlantic region over the last uh, week or so and this will certainly produce some more significant rainfall amounts all the way up into the mid-atlantic maybe the northeast u.s as well over the next five to six days or so well, we talked about this building ridge uh, last week into the eastern states and how it will play a role in slowing down this system. And here is the uh, forecast map from last night, 00 on 4 this morning, beginning the day here on Monday, August 5th. There's the uh, reflection of 500 millibars. This is again using the Canadian model run. Look at all this ridging right here already set up to its north. That's, uh, th these are the 500 millibar height anomaly forecast maps and the uh, higher heights to normal, higher pressures to normal are depicted on this particular map in orange color. And here we go. This is uh, already built into the eastern states and this just, uh, the system moved in this fashion here and it will just slow down in this uh, fashion here over the next 24 to 48 hours or so thanks in large part to this upper level ridge again i think it'll emerge off the south carolina coast and could intensify back into hurricane status before it makes a second landfall in south carolina let's say around uh, mid week or so now let's clear the deck here and move forward here with these 500 millibar height anomaly maps and here you go into the day on Tuesday and there's still that reflection of the ridging uh, over the mid-Atlantic region over the Carolinas a very slow movement of this system whenever you have slow movement of a tropical system watch out there could be a ton of rainfall in the southeastern states over the next 48 to 72 hours or so then uh, ultimately it will <clears throat> again emerge out over the open waters of the southwestern Atlantic and then uh, likely make a second landfall probably South Carolina by the middle of the week and perhaps back into category one or even an outside chance category two hurricane status and then it kind of gets kicked out uh, by the end of the week and slides up to the north here into the mid-Atlantic region now this is the Saturday uh, early Saturday forecast map and that is finally pulling away here on a Saturday but again just because the center or the remnants of Debbie don't push north into the mid-Atlantic region until the end of the week there will be an influence as early as late tomorrow tomorrow night with some tropical moisture and some potential very heavy rainfall all the way up in the mid-Atlantic region Tuesday afternoon Tuesday night time frame now let's walk through the vorticity field here this is uh, the, a kind of spin in the atmosphere uh, 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 in this particular case it's at the 850 millibar level here but I just wanted to walk through this to point out that there is indeed a second system that will have an influence in the mid-Atlantic region uh, late tomorrow and tomorrow night you see this uh, vorticity field right here and this is the Tuesday afternoon forecast map and it slides south and east right to this area by later tomorrow night meanwhile uh, the remains of Debbie at this time down by the uh, South Carolina Georgia border region right here but this is really reflective of a cool a cold frontal system at the surface level 
and that combined with tropical moisture flowing northward along the east coast can produce some very heavy rainfall again somewhere in the middle Atlantic region I expect some torrential rainfall later tomorrow tomorrow night combination of the tropical moisture from Debbie and this incoming cold front that has some support in the upper part of the atmosphere with that vorticity field we'll go all the way into midweek here and then finally into the latter part of the week and uh, this finally gets kicked out and pushes north it looks like at the end of the week into the uh, first into the Carolinas and then into the mid-Atlantic region. Well let's now wrap up with the surface forecast maps from the Zero Z Canadian model weather. Again, Debbie just made landfall in the Big Bend region as a Category 1 a hurricane. It will move to very slowly over the next couple of days, and it does weaken into back into tropical storm status once it moves over land over northern Florida over the next few hours. Remains tropical storm status. Now, this is a Tuesday morning forecast map. And then, uh, I, I do believe it moves off the South Carolina coast at this particular time this is the Wednesday morning forecast map and may even go a little bit farther out over the water here and I think at this particular time talking Wednesday it could re-intensify back into hurricane status cat one or maybe even cat two and then makes a second landfall probably over South Carolina uh, at the uh, midweek time frame here now let's push forward here and watch what the Canadian model uh, does here it does uh, hang by the South Carolina coast, and then it kind of makes that second landfall by late Wednesday, Wednesday night, maybe even to early Thursday. And again, this could uh, make a second landfall as a uh, as a hurricane. We'll have to wait and see on that, but I think that is certainly on the table. Moisture already feeding into the Mid Atlantic region as late as late tomorrow, tomorrow night. And this is. Wednesday into Thursday, there'll still be some tropical moisture feeding into the Mid-Atlantic region. Ultimately, this starts to kind of get kicked out here uh, by the end of the week. This is a Friday afternoon forecast map and a lot of heavy rain associated with uh, De Debbie, the remnants of Debbie at this particular time, not only in the Mid-Atlantic region, but all the way into the northeastern U.S. Now, GFS kind of has uh, quite a different solution as compared to this, but I think this Canadian model run has a pretty good handle on the situation. I tend to go with these set of forecast maps over the next several days. Bottom line, a lot of rainfall up and down the east coast over the next five days or so. Over the next uh, one to two days, uh, a lot of, a ton of rainfall over the southeastern states. Debbie looks like it'll cross over northern Florida, Georgia, and then reemerge out over the open water to the southwestern Atlantic for a little a time uh, later Tuesday night into Wednesday and it could re-intensify back into hurricane status before a second landfall then finally it all gets kicked out to the north towards the middle Atlantic region at the end of the week now none of this is set in stone again whenever you have that high pressure ridging slowing the tropical system down there can be changes here so it's certainly Stay tuned to ArcFieldWeather.com as we go through the next few days. That's it for now. For ArcFieldWeather.com, this has been meteorologist Paul Dorian.